1.3 billion years ago, in a distant, distant galaxy, two black holes locked into a spiral, falling inexorably towards each other, and collided, converting three suns worth of stuff into pure energy in the tenth of a second. 1.3 billion years ago, in a distant, distant galaxy, two black holes locked into a spiral. Falling inexorably towards each other, and collided, converting three suns worth of stuff into pure energy in the tenth of a second. 1.3 billion years ago, in a distant, distant galaxy, two black holes locked into a spiral, falling inexorably towards each other, and collided, converting three suns worth of stuff. Into pure energy in the tenth of a second, 1.3 billion years ago, in a distant, distant galaxy, two black holes locked into a spiral, falling inexorably towards each other, and collided, converting three suns worth of stuff into pure energy in the tenth of a second, 1.3 billion years ago, in a distant, distant galaxy, two black holes. Locked into a spiral, falling inexorably towards each other, and collided, converting three suns worth of stuff into pure energy in the tenth of a second. 1.3 billion years ago, in a distant, distant galaxy, two black holes locked into a spiral, falling inexorably towards each other, and collided, converting three suns worth of stuff. Into pure energy in the tenth of a second, 1.3 billion years ago, in a distant, distant galaxy, two black holes locked into a spiral, falling inexorably towards each other, and collided, converting three suns worth of stuff into pure energy in the tenth of a second, 1.3 billion years ago, in a distant, distant galaxy, two black holes. Locked into a spiral, falling inexorably towards each other, and collided, converting three suns worth of stuff into pure energy in the tenth of a second. 1.3 billion years ago, in a distant, distant galaxy, two black holes locked into a spiral, falling inexorably towards each other, and collided, converting three suns worth of stuff. Into pure energy in the tenth of a second, 1.3 billion years ago, in a distant, distant galaxy, two black holes locked into a spiral, falling inexorably towards each other, and collided, converting three suns worth of stuff into pure energy in the tenth of a second. So that's my very good friend and collaborator、uh, Scott Hughes, a theoretical physicist at MIT. Who's been studying gravitational waves from black holes and the signals that they could impart on observatories like LIGO for the past 23 years? So that's my very good friend and collaborator、uh, Scott Hughes, a theoretical physicist at MIT, who's been studying gravitational waves from black holes and the signals that they could impart on observatories like LIGO for the past 23 years. So that's my very good friend and collaborator、uh, Scott Hughes, a theoretical physicist at MIT. Who's been studying gravitational waves from black holes and the signals that they could impart on observatories like LIGO for the past 23 years? So that's my very good friend and collaborator、uh, Scott Hughes, a theoretical physicist at MIT, who's been studying gravitational waves from black holes and the signals that they could impart on observatories like LIGO for the past 23 years. So that's my very good friend and collaborator、uh, Scott Hughes, a theoretical physicist at MIT. Who's been studying gravitational waves from black holes and the signals that they could impart on observatories like LIGO for the past 23 years? So that's my very good friend and collaborator、uh, Scott Hughes, a theoretical physicist at MIT, who's been studying gravitational waves from black holes and the signals that they could impart on observatories like LIGO for the past 23 years. So that's my very good friend and collaborator、uh, Scott Hughes, a theoretical physicist at MIT. Who's been studying gravitational waves from black holes and the signals that they could impart on observatories like LIGO for the past 23 years? So that's my very good friend and collaborator
、uh, Scott Hughes, a theoretical physicist at MIT, who's been studying gravitational waves from black holes and the signals that they could impart on observatories like LIGO for the past 23 years. So that's my very good friend and collaborator,、uh, Scott Hughes, a theoretical physicist at MIT, who's been studying gravitational waves from black holes and the signals that they could impart on observatories like LIGO for the past 23 years. So that's my very good friend and collaborator,、uh, Scott Hughes, a theoretical physicist at MIT, who's been studying gravitational waves from black holes and the signals that they could impart on observatories like LIGO for the past 23 years. So, the trouble with gravitational waves is that they're very weak. They're preposterously weak. So, the trouble with gravitational waves is that they're very weak. They're preposterously weak. So, the trouble with gravitational waves is that they're very weak. They're preposterously weak. So, the trouble with gravitational waves is that they're very weak. They're preposterously weak. So, the trouble with gravitational waves is that they're very weak. They're preposterously weak. So, the trouble with gravitational waves. Is that they're very weak. They're preposterously weak. So the trouble with gravitational waves is that they're very weak. They're preposterously weak. So the trouble with gravitational waves is that they're very weak. They're preposterously weak. So the trouble with gravitational waves is that they're very weak. They're preposterously weak. So the trouble with gravitational waves is that they're very weak. They're preposterously weak. The technical difficulties to be surmounted in constructing such detectors are enormous. The technical difficulties to be surmounted in constructing such detectors are enormous. The technical difficulties to be surmounted in constructing such detectors are enormous. The technical difficulties to be surmounted in constructing such detectors are enormous. The technical difficulties to be surmounted in constructing such detectors are enormous. The technical difficulties to be surmounted in constructing such detectors. Are enormous. The technical difficulties to be surmounted in constructing such detectors are enormous. The technical difficulties to be surmounted in constructing such detectors are enormous. The technical difficulties to be surmounted in constructing such detectors are enormous. The technical difficulties to be surmounted in constructing such detectors are enormous. But physicists are ingenious. And with the support of a broad lay public, all obstacles will surely be overcome. But physicists are ingenious. And with the support of a broad lay public, all obstacles will surely be overcome. But physicists are ingenious. And with the support of a broad lay public, all obstacles will surely be overcome. But physicists are ingenious. And with the support of a broad lay public, all obstacles will surely be overcome. But physicists are ingenious. And with the support of a broad lay public, all obstacles will surely be overcome. But physicists are ingenious. And with the support of a broad lay public, all obstacles will surely be overcome. But physicists are ingenious. And with the support of a broad lay public, all obstacles will surely be overcome. But physicists are ingenious. And with the support of a broad lay public, all obstacles will surely be overcome. But physicists are ingenious. And with the support of a broad lay public, all obstacles will surely be overcome. But physicists are ingenious. And with the support of a broad lay public, all obstacles will surely be overcome. Instead, we use sound to listen for features like pitch and tone and rhythm and volume to infer a story behind the sounds. Instead, we use sound to listen for features like pitch and tone and rhythm and volume to infer a story behind the sounds. Instead, we use sound to listen. For features like pitch and tone and rhythm and volume, to infer a story behind the sounds. Instead, we use sound to listen for features like pitch and tone and rhythm and volume, to infer a story behind the sounds. Instead, we use sound to listen for features like pitch and tone and rhythm and volume, to infer 
a story behind the sounds. Instead, we use sound to listen for features like pitch and tone and rhythm and volume to infer a story behind the sounds. Instead, we use sound to listen for features like pitch and tone and rhythm and volume to infer a story behind the sounds. Instead, we use sound to listen for features like pitch and tone and rhythm and volume to infer a story behind the sounds. Instead, we use sound to listen for features like pitch and tone and rhythm and volume to infer a story behind the sounds. Instead, we use sound to listen for features like pitch and tone and rhythm and volume to infer a story behind the sounds. If the two black holes are non-spinning, you get a very simple chirp. Whoop! If the two black holes are non-spinning, you get a very simple chirp. If the two black holes are non-spinning, you get a very simple chirp. If the two black holes are non-spinning, you get a very simple chirp. If the two black holes are non-spinning, you get a very simple chirp. If the two black holes are non-spinning, you get a very simple chirp. If the two black holes are non-spinning, you get a very simple chirp. If the two black holes are non-spinning, you get a very simple chirp. If the two black holes are non-spinning, you get a very simple chirp. If the two black holes are non-spinning, you get a very simple chirp. Whoop! The problem is all the interesting physics happens in the core, and the core is hidden behind thousands of kilometers of iron and carbon and silicon. We'll never see through it. It's opaque to light. The problem is all the interesting physics happens in the core, and the core is hidden behind thousands of kilometers of iron and carbon and silicon. We'll never see through it. It's opaque to light. The problem is all the interesting physics happens in the core, and the core is hidden behind thousands of kilometers of iron and carbon and silicon. We'll never see through it. It's opaque to light. The problem is all the interesting physics happens in the core, and the core is hidden behind thousands of kilometers of iron and carbon and silicon. We'll never see through it. It's opaque to light. The problem is all the interesting physics happens in the core, and the core is hidden behind thousands of kilometers of iron and carbon and silicon. We'll never see through it. It's opaque to light. The problem is all the interesting physics happens in the core, and the core is hidden behind thousands of kilometers of iron and carbon and silicon. We'll never see through it. It's opaque to light. The problem is all the interesting physics happens in the core, and the core is hidden behind thousands of kilometers of iron and carbon and silicon. We'll never see through it. It's opaque to light. The problem is all the interesting physics happens in the core, and the core is hidden behind thousands of kilometers of iron and carbon and silicon. We'll never see through it. It's opaque to light. The problem is all the interesting physics happens in the core, and the core is hidden behind thousands of kilometers of iron and carbon and silicon. We'll never see through it. It's opaque to light. The Big Bang. I would love to be able to explore the first few moments of the universe, but we'll never see them because the Big Bang itself is obscured by its own afterglow. The Big Bang. I would love to be able to explore the first few moments of the universe, but we'll never see them because the Big Bang itself is obscured by its own afterglow. The Big Bang. I would love to be able to explore the first few moments of the universe, but we'll never see them because. The Big Bang itself is obscured by its own afterglow. The Big Bang. I would love to be able to explore the first few moments of the universe, but we'll never see them because the Big Bang itself is obscured by its own afterglow. The Big Bang. I would love to be able to explore the first few moments of the universe, but we'll never see them because the Big Bang itself is obscured by its own afterglow. The Big Bang. I would love to be able to explore the first few moments of the universe. But we'll never see them because the Big Bang itself is obscured by its own afterglow. The Big Bang. I would love to be able to explore the first few moments of the universe, but we'll never see them because the Big Bang itself is obscured by its own afterglow. The Big Bang. I would love to be able to explore the first few moments of the universe, but we'll never see them because the Big Bang itself is obscured by its own afterglow. The Big Bang. I would love to be able to explore the first few moments of the universe, but we'll never see them because the Big Bang itself is obscured by its own afterglow. The Big Bang. I would love to be able to explore the first few moments of the universe, but we'll never see them because the Big Bang itself is obscured by its own afterglow. Thanks to LIGO, we know how to build exquisite detectors that can listen to the universe, to the rustle and the chirp of the cosmos. 
Thanks to LIGO, we know how to build exquisite detectors that can listen to the universe, to the rustle and the chirp of the cosmos. Thanks to LIGO, we know how to build exquisite detectors that can listen to the universe, to the rustle and the chirp of the cosmos. Thanks to LIGO, we know how to build exquisite detectors that can listen to the universe, to the rustle and the chirp of the cosmos. Thanks to LIGO, we know how to build exquisite detectors that can listen to the universe, to the rustle and the chirp of the cosmos. Thanks to LIGO, we know how to build exquisite detectors that can listen to the universe, to the rustle and the chirp of the cosmos. Thanks to LIGO, we know how to build exquisite detectors that can listen to the universe, to the rustle and the chirp of the cosmos. Thanks to LIGO, we know how to build exquisite detectors that can listen to the universe, to the rustle and the chirp of the cosmos. Thanks to LIGO, we know how to build exquisite detectors that can listen to the universe, to the rustle and the chirp of the cosmos. Thanks to LIGO, we know how to build exquisite detectors that can listen to the universe, to the rustle and the chirp of the cosmos. What could be more glorious than listening to the Big Bang itself? Our job now is to dream big. Dream with us. Thank you.